Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm going to do a classic rock reaction, man. This is a complimentary quad, and it's featuring the music of Chicago, early Chicago. There is early Fleetwood Mac. There is early Chicago. This is early Chicago, man. So we're first going to check out uh, 25 or 6 to 4, followed by It Better and Soon, followed by In the Country, and finally, I'm a Man. And I, uh, I'm, I believe that all of these are live, if I'm not mistaken. Before I pop this off, I just want to give a shout out and a thanks very much to Finesse Muse. Thanks for the react, or thanks for the recommendation, and thanks also for providing links, man. Uh, Finesse has a Finesse has a long ass intro here, man. Hang on, let's uh, check this out. He said, "Hey, SDB, in response to your request for an early Chicago reaction during your Rick Beato top twenty guitar solos of all time, here is a quad I've put together, all taken from the same live concert in July of 1970. Yeah, all live." Rick Beato rated the guitar solo in Chicago's 25 or 6 to 4 as number 15 of all time. The quad selection I've put together not only features this track, but three others that beg the question, who the hell is that guitar player for Chicago? It's someone that most have never heard of, the most criminally underrated guitarist ever, Terry Kath. I know of Terry Kath because I believe that Jimi Hendrix, uh, uh, has really given him the thumbs up and hold him in high regard. Someone told me that. It might have been uh, Finesse. Rolling Stone missed the mark again by not ranking him in the top 100 guitarists of all time. But Jimi Hendrix knew differently way back in 68 to 69 when Chicago was the house man at the Whiskey A Go Go in LA. Jimi was there one night with Mitch Mitchell and after the show he went backstage and said you cats play like motherfuckers. Your horns sound like one lung and your guitarist, he is better than me. Jimmy liked them enough to take them on tour with him in 69. So Rolling Stone, here is a finger to you and all I got to say after this Chicago concert in 1970 is the guitar needed a cigarette. That's what Rolling Stone said. Okay. This is not your 80s and 90s Chicago with top 40 ballads. This is early Chicago when they rocked. Uh, before the tragic death of guitarist Terry Kath in 78. Gone, but with this reaction STB, hopefully not forgotten. Thank you, Wayne. This is uh, this will be fun when it's my turn again. Weeks down the road, feel free to paraphrase Jimmy's F word if you want to make it PG. <laughs> you don't have to worry about that anymore. We're in the age of COPPA now, you know? It's actually good for the channel to keep me in a certain category if I actually throw a couple of swears out there. What a crazy world we live in. Anyway, let's do this, man. Let's hit up our first song, being 25 or 6 to 4. You remember that COPPA bullshit? Had me so scared, man, I actually uh, left YouTube for a while. All right, Chicago, 25 or 6 to 4. Let's get it. That's Terry Kemp, I believe. It's nice, you got him tuning up and everything. Cheers, baby. I toast your sparkle.
classic brass lineup.
Excellent. Very okay. That was excellent. Can't see the crowd at all, but that's okay. You can hear them. That was excellent, man. This is what we're talking about. Early Chicago. That was great, man. 25 or 624. An extended jam, seven minutes long. Wow. That was great, man. I've been looking to get to early Chicago for quite a while. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I talked about it for the last couple of months, and finally here I am. It feels nice when you kind of complete a circle and uh, whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish, you finally get there. Excuse me, man. Yeah, man, it's been a while, long time coming, getting busier and busier with both platforms and everything, you know. But uh, yeah, sh Chicago, early Chicago. I knew that uh, Chicago had two elements, their 80s uh, rock ballad phase, and then there was an earlier Chicago, more of a rock blues phase. And I also knew that they had brass. I can't think off the top of my head of another outfit that has uh, a brass section like that of Chicago. I'm sure you can. Let me know what other bra uh, rock band, successful rock band, has had um, a brass outfit in their lineup. Let me know about that. I should do a series. All right. Let's do this first. Let's, uh, they need no introduction, but you know what? I can't always assume and dismiss the fact that I'm getting new um, uh, viewers every day, and a lot of them are young. Uh, I've become aware recently that my youngest subscriber, as I recall, is 11 years old. So I've got to uh, do my diligence to kind of lay a good foundation and not just skip over the intros. So, Chicago. Chicago is an American rock band formed in Chicago, Illinois in 67. The group was initially billed as the big thing before calling themselves the Chicago Transit Authority in 68 and then shortening the name in 69. The self-described rock and roll band with horns blended elements of classical music, jazz, R&B, and pop music. They produced numerous top 40 hits over two decades and continue to record and perform live. Yeah, so they're still around. I wonder if they still have some original members in that lineup. That's the question. Growing out of several Chicago area bands in the late 60s, the original lineup consisted of Peter Cetera on bass, Terry Kath on guitar, Robert Lamb on keyboards, Lee Lonen on trumpet, James Pankow on trombone, Walter Parasitter on wood woodwinds, that's the sexy sax, and Danny Serafin on drums. Cetera, Kath, and Lamb shared lead vocal duties. Louder de Olivier joined the band as a percussionist and second drummer in 74. Kath died in 78 and was replaced by several guitarists in succession. That was sad, a sad passing, uh, and I know that it was a it was an accidental gunshot wound. I believe he was cleaning his rifle. Yeah, crazy. He was in his cabin and he was cleaning his rifle. Sad, man. Cetera left the band in 85. The band's lineup has been more fluid since 2000. Keyboardist Robert Lamb and the entire horn section have remained constant members. Okay, that just answered my question. The original lineup of Chicago was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2016. Chicago received a Grammy Lifetime Achievement Award, October 16, 2020. Excellent. So that's the band. Let's check out this excellent song. 25 or 6 to 4 is a song written by American musician Robert Lamb, one of the founding members of Chicago. It was, record it was recorded in 69 for their second album, Chicago, with Peter Cetera on lead vocals. In a 2013 interview, Robert Lamb said he composed 25 or 6 to 4 on a 12 string guitar with only 10 strings, it was missing two low E strings, and that he wrote the lyrics in one day. The band first rehearsed the song at the Whiskey A Go Go. 
Lamb said the song is about trying to write a song in the middle of the night. The song's title is the time at which the song is set, 25 or 26 minutes before 4 a.m. 25 or 6 to 4, until 4 a.m. Because of the unique phrasing of the song's title, 25 or 6 to 4 has been interpreted to mean everything from a quantity of illicit drugs to the name of a famous person in code. It's amazing how people just go off. <laughs> The song's opening riff has been compared to chord progressions and riffs in other songs. In the opinion of writer Melissa Locker, the, the opening guitar riff from Green Day's Brain Stew bears a striking similarity to the opening stanza of Chicago's 25 or 64. Green Day's Brain Stew. I gotta uh, look for that. LA Weekly's music editor Andy Herman details the riff similarly to the chord progression in Led Zeppelin's version of Babe, I'm Gonna Leave You, written by Anne Breton, which came out a year before 25 or 64, and the similarity of that chord progression to one in George Harrison's song, Why My Guitar Gently Weeps, in which came out even earlier, my favorite Beatles song. He labels Brain Stew, released in 1996, as derivative by comparison to 25 or 6 to 4. The original version. The album was released in January of 1970, and the song was edited and released as a single in June, climbing to number 4 on the US Billboard Hot 100 and number 7 on the UK Singles Chart. It was the band's first song to reach the top 5 in the US. It's been included in numerous Chicago compilation albums. In 2015, Dave Swanson, writer for Ultimate Classic Rock, listed the song as number one on his top 10 list of Chicago songs. Classic Rock Review says the song is one of the most indelible Chicago tunes. In 2019, Bobby Oliver and Andrew Untenberger, music critics for Billboard magazine, ranked the song number one on their list of the 50 best Chicago songs. High praise, great song though. Let's check out our next track, man. It better end soon. And uh, oh yeah, shit. I forgot. This is a long ass track, y'all. 15 minutes long. Finesse, you are lucky that I hold you in the highest of regards. Everybody, going forward. 10 minutes max for songs, because what this does, especially in a quad, is it takes away from my reading and my commentary and stuff, so I'm going to have to cut corners because of the length of this song. So please and thank you going forward, everybody. 10 minutes or less. All right. Chicago, it better and soon. Let's get it. section adds a lot of grit and salt, don't they? That's the party element of their sound for sure. And uh, 
make me smile. Some of my own dad's old stuff. Can't take it no more. People kill it.
sexy sex. Come on. 
Having the brass in the lineup just elevates everything. by Terry Kath. Wow, man. Powerful. Powerful jam. Long jam. Strong, strong anti-war message. <clears throat> I never got to this track when I was uh, doing my uh, anti-war thing when I first started. It better end soon. These are the kind of classic cuts that classic rock radio stations, so-called classic rock radio stations, should be playing. At least a deep dive into some of this great stuff. At least once a week. You know what I mean? Yeah, you play your little commercial flares and your little fusion shit, you know, and all of that sort of thing that the contemporary classic rock radio stations are doing now. Still, uh, with the audacity to call themselves classic rock, you play Led Zeppelin here, and then you play Culture Club there, you know, and then the Stones here, and then Dexy's Midnight Runners there. Play shit like this. Classic cuts. You can play 24-7. All kinds of different tunes from the classic era of rock and roll, and not have to play the same song twice in a month, right? What's wrong with you? I don't understand classic rock radio. Anyway, hey, no ranting. I did all of that shit uh, a couple of days ago. So, it better end soon. Appears on Chicago. It's the second studio album by Chicago-based American rock band, Chicago. Like their debut album, Chicago Transit Authority, this was a double album. It was their first album under the name Chicago. The band's prior name, Chicago Transit Authority, was changed due to a threatened lawsuit from the actual mass transit operator bearing the same name. And the first to use the now ubiquitous cursive Chicago logo on the cover. Released January 1970 on Columbia Records, Chicago was commercially successful. It was certified gold by the RIAA in April of the same year of its release and certified platinum in 91. It reached number 4 on the album charts in the US and number 6 on the album charts in the UK and produced 3 top 10 singles on the Billboard Hot 100. The album received 3 Grammy Award nominations for Album of the Year, Contemporary Vocal Group and Best Album Cover. It was voted Best Album of 1970 by readers of Cashbox Magazine and the 1971 Best Small Combo LP by readers of Playboy Magazine. Okay, you know what, y'all? 
let's stop there because this was a long ass track and um, I don't want to uh, go on too too long and have this go too far over uh, an hour so let's hop to our next track man that being in the country and that's seven minutes long in the country let's get it
makes me want to move to the country now. I'll probably do that one day. song is almost a party, you know? Good jam. This quad is going to do for me exactly what Artist of the Month did for me for Fleetwood Mac. I think of Peter Green. So going forward, whenever I say Chicago, I'm not thinking about their 80s ballad period. I'm thinking about the Terry Cap period. Absolutely. Good jam, man. Good jam, band. Fantastic. Guys had some soul, had some groove, had some great jam. Took the time out to stretch the songs out with some great solos, making every single song an epic one. That's the way you do it, man. These are the cuts that classic rock radio has to play. <laughs> I'm not going to let up. I'm just going to be all on these guys all the time. All right. Fantastic. In the Country. In the Country also appears on Chicago, the debut album, or the second album. It's the second studio album by Chicago-based American rock group Chicago. Critical Reception. Contemporary reviews for the album were mixed. In his review for the Chicago Sun-Times, writer Al Rudis says Chicago's second album confirms that Chicago is one of the most exciting, most original, and most accomplished jazz rock groups in existence. Whereas in a review for the film... Ah. Uh, no, not you, man. I don't give a damn what this guy's got to say. You know what? Some people are going to jump on me. Why are you so judgmental? Okay. I assume that this guy doesn't have anything good to say. So you know what? One time, let's read what this dude has to say. And then you will probably understand. Where was I? Whereas in a review for The Village Voice, Robert Criscow gave a review of Chicago as a D plus and called it sterile and stupid, writing that if Duke Ellington never got away with an extended work for horns and meaningfulness, what makes James William Gersio and the self-designated revolutionaries who are his cohorts think they can? Do you now see why? I don't spend any time whatsoever reading this guy's reviews. I rest my case. 
Some people jump on me for not giving this guy a platform. This is the reason why. To hell with you, Chris Gow. There have been positive retrospective reviews. Lindsay Planner from All Music gave the album four and a half out of five stars and said its songs underscored a solid foundation of complex jazz changes with heavy electric rock and roll that the band so brazenly forged on the first set, unquote. You see the contrast? Who is more right in your opinion? Tell me. Tell me if I'm overreacting. Who is more right about Chicago? That guy that I just read or this one? You be the judge. You tell me. You tell me if I'm overreacting. Jim Beveglia, writing for American Songwriter, said, 50 years after its release, Chicago 2 still stands as the one, one of the band's signature achievements. Listening to Chicago 2 now, it's remarkable just how smoothly the various pieces blend together. Again, there you go. Chris Gow. If anyone was more deserving of a serious horse whipping, you are that person. You have no right being a critic. Anyway, man, I feel a rant coming, so let's not go there. I've been drinking too much sugar cane rum, and it would be too easy to go off. Let's hit up our next track, man. Chicago, I'm a man. Don't let nobody steal your joy. If there are any fools like this in your life, family, friends, working relations, whoever, tell them to hit the bricks. Life is too short. All right. Chicago, I'm a man. Let's get it. All right, let's keep it going. Do you remember that Beeman's commercial with chewing gum with all of those fantastic, beautiful women jogging on the beach while this song is playing in the background? It takes me back to my child years. Let me know if you know what the hell I'm talking about. Yes, I 
got your work cut out for you, bro. Shots of the crowd. They must be digging this, man. Take a breather. <laughs> Shot at the crowd, holy cow. I think that's the first. That's the way to end a concert, to end a jam. Woo! Yeah, you definitely earned that tall pool one. Right on. That is early Chicago, y'all. That is the classic sound of Chicago. This jam 
this extended jam, we should be hearing this on classic rock radio at least once a month. That's what I say. Anyway, hey, I'm a man is a song written by the Spencer Davis group singer, songwriter Steve Winwood, and record producer Jimmy Miller. Chicago, then known as Chicago Transit Authority, recorded a cover version of I'm a Man for their 1969 debut album, The Chicago Transit Authority. When the band's popularity surged after their second album, I'm a Man, was released as the B-side to a re-release of Questions 67 and 68. Radio stations ended up playing both sides, and I'm a Man reached number 49 on the U.S. Billboard Hot 100 chart in 71 and got as high as the top 10 in the U.K., reaching number 8. The song reached number 13 in Ireland. Chicago's cover arrangement features an extended percussion and drum section with a total runtime of 7 minutes and 40 seconds and is based around the distortion-heavy blues rock guitar of virtuoso Terry Cat, the drumming of Danny Serafin, the bass of Peter Cetera, the roaring Hammond organ of Robert Lamb, and the horn players periodically switching over to auxiliary percussion instruments such as claves, cowbell, maracas, and tambourines. Cat, Cetera, and Lamb each sing a verse piece, not singing the lyrics as they were originally written, but as they misheard and or revised them. They probably just revised them. Uh, preluding Seraphon's preluding Seraphon's extended drum solo before a return to the sound to the second and third verses with the horn section and choruses that bring the song to a climactic drum roll and finally leading into a guitar solo to bring the song to a dramatic close. Sorry y'all, there were no commas or anything like that. I was struggling reading through it all. This version is featured on the 71 uh, four record live album, Chicago at Carnegie Hall and Chicago Live in Japan, and has remained a fan favorite and concert staple throughout Chicago's career. Santana has also used a small part of this song in the track Waiting, which appears on their self-titled 1969 debut album. Okay, that concludes our look at early Chicago. Excellent Chicago. Hey, I'm not going to knock their 80s stuff. I grew up in the 80s and uh, they had some cool ballads. They weren't uh, seriously sappy or anything like that. They were cool rock ballads, you know, so, but yeah, man, I'm telling you, I'm sure that if you line up a whole bunch of people, um, they will tell you that early Chicago was definitely their jam, you know, that's definitely probably the best time uh, in memory. And like I said, for me, um, when you say to me, Fleetwood Mac, immediately, I think of the Peter Green years. When you say to me, Chicago, I'm going to start thinking of the early years with Terry Kath. Terry Kath years. That is Chicago to me, baby. Right on. So, I'm uh, going to bounce, y'all. Uh, before I do, uh, Jeffrey. Yeah, so Jeffrey, I believe it's an album reaction. So Jeffrey is up tomorrow. Uh, Amy, Jeff, Robert, uh, Jack. I've uh, got to hit up reactions for you folks as well. So thanks for joining me, Finesse. Thank you very much for this recommendation. Taking me back to some some uh, really, really good grooves here, man. And I really dig not only the guitar playing of Terry Cat, but also his singing voice. Powerful, strong. I mean, he really um, just uh, drowned out Peter's voice. I mean, you know, Peter has a completely different voice. I struggled to hear what Peter was singing. I had no problem hearing what Terry was singing. That's how powerful of a singer he was. And very, very distinct uh, voice. I think he's got one of the best voices in rock and roll. Anyways, y'all, take care. Have a good one. I'll see you tomorrow. Peace.